Hi guys, welcome to Knits Up, the podcast that I host and have hosted for four or five years now. I forget how long it's been. I started in audio and then went to video. Every once in a while I'll do an audio one again, but um, it's been about a month since I recorded, so I thought I'd better record today. Uh, it's Sunday before Memorial Day in the States. I believe it's the 24th. And I am Mindy, your hostess, otherwise known as Knitter CNY. Um, and you can find show notes and past shows at knitsup.libson.com. There's a group over on Ravelry. And also, if you want to leave some star ratings on iTunes or reviews over on iTunes, that would be great. If you have any questions about anything I post today, um, let me know and I will get back to you. Um, it has been, I was going to record last weekend. The caveat with that is that I, um, was going to record. Uh, however, things just got away from me and I'm an only child of a widower whom I live with, um, my dad. And last weekend, he ended up going into the local hospital through the emergency room, and he's been there a week, and he should be there about another week. We're not really sure right at the moment. They're doing some more testing to see if a procedure might need to be done. Um, it's not anything like earth shattering or anything like that. It's uh, issues we've dealt with for a while. There are just new issues popping up as, of course, apparent ages. So we're trying to deal with that, but he's safe and um, being well taken care of by the local hospital. Um, who I can't say about, can't say more nice things about. Um, they've been great. And that's where I'll be going after I'm recording. So I have been getting a lot of knitting done. Because um, there's not a lot to do up at the hospital besides, oh, I think I'll go to the cafeteria now. <laughs> so um, I finished two things. Yeah, two things, three things maybe. The two really big things that I'm pulling over here. Now, I don't, I haven't tucked in the ends yet, but this is what's called the Girl Cousins Afghan on my uh, projects page on Ravelry. And this is for a graduation present. Now, you can't even see the whole thing. The wingspan is, okay, I'll fold it in half. So you get an idea. That's half of it, and it doesn't even fit in the frame. This is a quarter of it. So that's folded in fourths, and that's how long that is. Um, it's about as wide. Um, the yarn I used for this is Bernat blanket. Um, not the baby blanket, just the regular blanket. And I've got two skeins of taupe, one of pine bough, and the other one is like purpley plum or Precious Plum, something along the line. There's Plum in it, but I wouldn't say that it's Plum. This is the taupe. This is the Plum color, which I and the rest of the world would call Burgundy or Maroon or Merlot, something along those lines. This is Pine Bough. That's a Hunter Green. And then we end with another taupe. And you might be saying to yourself, hmm, that looks odd. That doesn't look like knitting. That's crochet. The reason being is crochet is a whole heck of a lot faster for blankets and for afghans. And the other thing is with crochet, if you begin to get a hole somewhere, the whole thing doesn't run up or down the length of the blanket. So I did half double crochet. I believed I used a size N hook maybe. It's on the projects page. I think it's an N. It was a Drew and Borsky crochet dude um, thing. It might be an L, maybe. I don't know. But anyways, it's on the projects page. Um, it was really nice. The Drew and Borsky ones have like a rubberized handle. So the rubber only goes about that far from the tip of the, the hook part. And so it's very, you can't draw the yarn too far down the crochet hook. So I think you get more uniform crochet with the larger, um, the larger sizes. And it's a metal hook with rubberized bottom. I think I paid mm, five bucks for it. 
at either Joann's or um, Walmart. It's uh, a boy product, B-O-Y-E. Um, they're the manufacturer, and Michaels carries them too. Um, so they might be there, but I can't remember whether they carry that particular part of the line. The other afghan, the other blanket, is also done. This is called the Boy Cousin Afghan. Um, my cousin's daughter's foster brother is also graduating from high school. So um, I wanted to make something for him because he's lived in their family for the last few years. And he's part of the family, so he gets a blanket. Um, this is Loops and Threads Charisma in the Lakeside colorway. And I used, I think, about 14 skeins of this. Um, I got it on sale for, like, some ridiculously low price. I think I paid, like, $26, $27 for all of the yarn because there was a great sale and then I thought I bought 12 skeins or 13 skeins and it wasn't wide enough so I bought two more skeins. Um, this was held doubled with a size P crochet hook I believe. Um, this The boy set that has three of them in it that there's a really big one, a medium one, and a kind of a smaller one but they're all larger size hooks and that is um, the blue one out of that set if you're looking at Walmart or something like that it's the big blue one so two of these um, two skeins held together and then just another half double crochet very straight um, I was going to do a ripple pattern that's on the label but I couldn't figure out how to make it work properly it was too long it's done lengthwise and then across and it just looked weird so this is actually done lengthwise, too, because um, he's a tall kid. So that's the blanket that way. But it's really wide. I mean, it's wider. I tend to use my body as a guide for how long and how wide to make something. I'm a larger size lady, as you can see. So if it goes over me, it goes over a kid, um, especially a kid who, you know, weighs less than I do, but it's probably much taller than I am. But, you know, that way if they want to use it on their bed at college, you know, it's something warm. You can throw it in the car to uh, go home with, you know, in case the car breaks down, because we all know college kids and cars, the car eventually breaks down on the side of the road at some point in a snowstorm, and you want the kid to have something. Other things I've been working on. Oh dear. Pardon me if I reach for anything, because I'm just at this point just kind of going through the motions of pulling stuff out and looking at it. Um, I got a dishcloth done. I haven't tucked in the ends of it yet. Um, this is pink. I'm not sure. It might be a sugar and cream yarn. I think it's sugar and cream by um, Lily. Um, it's pink. This is Grandma's best dishcloth. Um, basically, you start here with four stitches. You increase until you're about halfway through the ball of yarn, and then you decrease. You get a cute little eyelid edge. Um, it's a really easy pattern, and frankly, for mindless knitting in the hospital, this is perfect because it's small. And you're going to use it when you get done. Um, I'm either planning on giving this as, like, a washcloth or I can use this as a dishcloth around the house. Um, I use dishcloths a lot around the house because you can throw them in the washer and the dryer therefore they're clean when you get done with them. Um, I started another dishcloth which is in this bag. Um, I'm doing this on an Addy Turbo 16 inch circular and it's of course, I dropped a couple of stitches, but we'll just put them on and pretend that it's beautiful for now because I don't want to fiddle with stitches. I'm trying to keep this short. This is about a third of the way done. Those colors are pretty accurate. Um, 
and this is a newer yarn to me. This is Premier Yarns Home Cotton Multi. Um, this is not 100% cotton. It's 85 cotton, 15 poly. Um, their theory is that it's supposed to make the it last a little better so it doesn't shred. Um, I don't know about that because I haven't washed it or used it or anything. This particular colorway is... Wowzers, I'm trying to read and read this. Rosy Cheeks. I don't know where you get that. I think somebody had a bottle of wine and named the color, personally. So, that looks more like... It looks more like faded laundry to me. You know, like if you put in, you know, bleach and washed coveralls and then threw some pink underwear in with it. That's about the color it is. Um... As you can tell, I've had very little sleep, so I'm finding things quite amusing. And that's a US size 6, 4.0 millimeter. Um, I use circulars on these dishcloths. It's tons easier than trying to keep track of two needles. And also with these kind of dishcloths, if you are gonna teach somebody and you don't wanna use circulars, use very short um, straights. If you're teaching somebody how to do this, make them two different colors. If you can, a lot of times there's like kids starter knitting needles that one will be like red and the other one's yellow or something like that. I think, um, Lion Brand puts out a set that I've seen at Michael's a number of times. Um, they're like really short. They're like six or seven inches, something like that. And the other thing I'm working on and almost done with, um, are the heavier weight socks. This one is done. It looks really huge, but it will fit my foot. It's more like a boot sock than anything else. It's two by two ribbing. Uh, that's knit two, purl two, and then just a heel flap, heel flap, gussets, wedge toe. Um, I am using, and I'm almost done with the other one, almost. Um, let me take the fourth needle out. Um, I am here on this one. I'm starting the toe. I'm literally starting the toe, which will not take long because I go down from 48 stitches to 24. Um, it's a really simple pattern. Um, typically with my regular socks, I use 64 stitches, but this I'm doing with two skeins together. Um, you can see one of them's kind of off-white and the other one's kind of some funky colors. Um, the off-white is, I think it's either collage or creamer, I can't remember. These were Millen's that I got at Wowzers, Finger Lakes Fiber Festival in Hemlock, New York last fall. Um, they were sold by a place called Pollywogs. Um, and Pollywogs is based out of uh, Wayland, New York. And they do a number of the shows. They do, um, they've done Rhinebeck in the past. They've done a couple of different shows I've been at. I don't know if they're doing the CNY Fiber Festival down in Bauckville in a couple of weeks or whether they're doing the Finger Lakes Fiber Festival, you know, but um, if you see them, look for them because the other thing, the other, they do carry some fiber um, a little bit. The big thing that they have in their booth are seconds for Brown Sheep Yarn Company. And I have bought seconds of um, Top of the Lamb or whatever the, the one is that's, um, 85 wool and 15% mohair and I wouldn't know their seconds. Um, their second, they're called seconds by Brown Sheep Yarn and you can buy seconds from Brown Sheep um, typically at their factory or from a couple of just dis distributors but um, Pollywogs does a really good job of selling them um, and they're like half the cost that a regular skein of 
brown sheep would cost. And if I'm making a hat or something, if there's a knot or a funky piece, it's going to kind of blend out. It's also great if you're doing felting, um, that particular blend 8515 between wool and mohair makes a beautiful bag. It just is gorgeous. Or if you're making the fiber trims felted clogs, those work really well because they get really fuzzy really fast. Um, other things I'm working on. I brought out the shawl that I've been working on for what seems like forever. Um, I'll go this way. I'm in the middle of a row, so. And it wouldn't stretch out anyways. Um, but this is Daybreak by Stephen West. And as you can see, it's starting to change color down here. I'll kind of hold that up. Um, I had started this a long time ago. Um, a long time ago. The one yarn, the purple, is Jezebel by Southwest Trading Company. It's just a fingering weight. Um, fingering weight wool. Um, I like the name of it. And the color is sort of, it's not really blue. It's kind of a purpley blue. I don't know if that's going to show up. But it's got a little bit of tonality in it. And then this down here um, is starting with a yellow. It's going down to an orange and then a pink. And then it's going to go purple and then a, a lavender and a blue. Um, I don't know if there's any color that's deeper than that blue. I think that one blue is the deepest. And this is Gypsy Girl Creations um, that I had bought at Rhinebeck a number of years ago. Two, three, three years ago maybe. Um, and I bought two skeins of that, so I'm alternating these. Um, Jezebel is 400 yards, and then the Gypsy Girl Creations, I think, are 200 yards apiece. So I'm actually alternating the Jezebel because they're not quite quite at the same progression. They're, they're hand-painted yarns. I have this much left of Jezebel, and I've got two balls left of the, that just looks funny, um, two balls, it like, look like eyeballs or something, <laughs> two balls left of the Gypsy Girl Creations. Um, you may have seen the Gypsy Girl Creations, um, and I can't even think of her name, the lady who's the phlebotomist from, um, Knit One Heart Two, whom I think I love watching them. They're so positive. They're so funny. Um, so if you haven't watched Knit One Heart Two, go, go watch them. But she did a project with Gypsy Girl Creations. So I was like, I have that. I have that yarn. I have that pro I have a project. <laughs> and so this is what I'm doing. I've got quite a bit to go. It's on a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter uh, Addy Turbo, I think it's the Addy Turbo Lace, it got a little bent, nobody cares. <laughs> um, I think the last thing I'm working on is somewhere here, maybe, maybe, it's in this bag, pardon the rustling, because there's rustling. Um, this is a local vendor, um, out of the Liverpool area and they are I love the name again it's narwhal needlework and this yarn is called lumpy bumpy space lumpy space princess valentine I have no idea to what that refers but it's machine wash chumble dry 75% superwash merino 25% nylon and it's 462 yards which is a lot for a fingering weight and I paid $24 for it, which is pretty good. Um, I'm not sure what the base is. It's not a very hard twisting base. Um, it's just a, a normal base. It's it's not like super twisted up like say a socks that rock would be. Um, this is what it, it came wound in the cake like this, but they also sell it in Hanks. So it's got purples and like purples and a little bit of fuchsia and a lot of teal. And this is what I'm currently working on. It's going to be a sock. Um, it's not 
not super stripey or anything like that that I'm finding so far. And I'm doing this on a Addy Turbo 12 inch needle. That's a, I think it's a 2.0. Let me look. Yes, it's a 12 inch, 12 inch, 2.0 millimeter. Um, this I bought from um, Mission Rose Quiltery. And if you're local, um, get off at the Maddie Dale exit, head towards Kmart. Um, and they're in the very, if you're facing Kmart, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's Rena Center and a dance studio or some jazz like that. Go all the way around to the left of that building as you're facing Kmart. And they're on the, the last slot. Um, they're a quilt shop and a knitting slash crochet, crochet shop. So they have a lot of stuff in them. A lot. Um, very easy to get into. It uh, seems to be disabled friendly. You know, because they're on a, they're on a strip mall, basically. Uh, two other things I'm working on. Not really that exciting on this one, but um, a blanket, a lap blanket um, for one of the local nursing homes. We have a volunteers from our church that go there. So um, this is all on a needle. So. It's kind of dark. It's kind of showing up dark, but this is Fireside by Loops and Thread. No. Nicole. Or or I could get this out. So yeah, Stitch Studio by Nicole. This is um, AC Moore's Answer to Homespun. You can kind of see the colors there. This color is called Bluebird Song. Bluebird Song, which is kind of appropriate because the bluebirds are coming back to New York State. Um, and actually, if you are interested in bluebird houses, <laughs> call the DEC, call the Boy Scouts, call the State Fair, and ask about bluebird houses because I know somebody locally that makes them, who is the Upstate Bluebird Society. And you can get a kit and you can make bluebird houses. Um, at least in New York State, you can. And there are miles and miles and miles and miles of trails of bluebird houses that are maintained um, by volunteers and you could have bluebirds in your backyard and uh, it's really easy to make the kit you know really easy to put up a house um, and bluebirds are the official bird of new york state so and they sing and they're cute so that's the yarn um I've got two skeins of that. I'm doing the Grandma's Best dishcloth pattern. And then when I get through one skein, then I know I'm done increasing, and I start the decreasing. Uh, the only spinning I've been doing is I'm working on this spinning bunny five-ounce set. They're different um, kinds of wool and um, things to spin. I'm using a shocked um, high-low spindle. I think it's the one of the lighter ones. Um, it's certainly not three ounces. I think it's like 1.1 1 .1 or something. Um, it's called high-low because you can spin it this way, which is high spindle or top whirl spindle because this whirl part, this circly part is called the whirl, W-H-O-R-L. It's on the top. And you use like a cup hook that's on it to the wool. And then you can use it as a bottom whirl because the whirl's on the bottom. Um, and what you would do is put the yarn up here and do like a little half hitch thing and go like this and spin this way. Um, typically, I want to say down in South America, Peru, Ecuador, um, you mostly see bottom whirl spindles. Um, Although, I'm sure some of this has been top whirl. I spun top whirl because I just found it easier for me. I'm left-handed, and trying to coordinate some of this stuff is crazy. And I was teaching myself how to spin. And they always start you with a student spindle that's 
really kind of funky. I'm not going to take it, but I finished the whole bag, the whole first one ounce of blue and black face Fleischer. People in England can tell me how to pronounce it. Um, it's spinning. Wowzers. Let's try this again. Spinning dash bunny dot com. Um, out of the Ithaca area, I think. Ithaca-ish area. She has shawls. She has spinning stuff. I think she has some wheels, too. She does a lot of the shows around here. Um, and just really nice stuff. And this is called the Sea Glass Collection. Um, that was the Fleischer. This is Blue Flash, Fleischer, and Sulk. You can kind of see how that's going to show up. Um, they're all dyed with similar colors, um, but because of the kind of um, because of the kind of fiber content it is, it takes the dye differently. This is called Woody, which is washable merino and tencel. Um, you can see there's kind of a shine from the tencel. This is alpaca, fifty merino. 30 and 20 silk. Um, the silk kind of gives it that shine, but like that blue shows up much more pronounced. And then the last one that I got is a Falkland, which is 100% wool. You can see that's kind of, they're kind of like, the colors are not, say, as they're duller than the silk because the silk will give it shine and the tencel kind of acts as a I don't know, a buffer, I would say. Like if you were going to paint something and then you kind of rubbed, you know, had pastels and you, instead of just leaving the pastel to be kind of crisp, you kind of push that around a little bit and blended it in. That's kind of what the, um, that's kind of what the tencel reminds me of. It reminds, I picked these colors because they remind me of a Monet painting, um, the one with the bridge that I can't remember the name to. But other than that, that's what I'm working on. I've got, so I've actually gotten two projects, big projects, done. Um, I did the uh, Charisma Blanket in a week. But that's easy to do when you have a size P hook. And two um, US 5 um, on the yarn standards, the chunky weight um, acrylic. And... The Bernat blanket is really, really easy to work with. If you need to make a baby blanket for a baby or another blanket for somebody and you just want something really, really super quick, but it won't fall apart. Um, like I said, I haven't washed it yet, but that blanket can sort of stand up on its own. Um, it's very thick. It's different than any other chenille kind of yarn I've used. Um, I have used Line Brand Chenille when it was the old incarnation about 20 years ago, the chenille thick and quick that I could have cried when the first time I washed it, all of the chenille fell apart. They very quickly discontinued that particular yarn, had it come back as another configuration that apparently doesn't shed quite as much, but that, that Bernat blanket is outstanding. I hope they never discontinue it because it's wonderful. Um, in other news, I'm planning a vacation, hopefully, regarding everything else going on. Um, I want to go to Toronto and Ontario. I live in Syracuse, so I'd have to go through Buffalo, basically, and go up to Ontario. I've been to Toronto before, probably about 25 years ago when I was in college. So it's been a while. Um, the Yankees are playing at some point in August there for a three-game series. Um my thought first was to go to Cleveland, go see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and then go up to Ontario. With things the way they are, I'm probably just going, it's a little bit too much to drive on my own. So I think I'm going to just go to Toronto, see a Yankees game at the Blue Jays Stadium, stay close enough that I can walk to it, and then um, for the second part of the trip, go to um, Listowel. Which I'm hoping I pronounced that right. Listowel, Ontario, um, because the tent sale for Spinrite is going on at a 
certain period of time in August. Um, so I want to go. I want to buy yarn. I want to buy, you know, so many ounces for cheap. I know I have enough yarn for a thousand years, but if I, I'm really looking at the silk bamboo, that would be nice um, in the purple color way. It would be awesome. I want to make a sweater with that. Um, the sweater that has the little ruffles on it, the cardigan. And then also, um, I want to look at, because sometimes they have weird discontinued things um, that would be nice. I'd like to get some sock yarn up there, um, just some regular wool yarn, um, see what all else they've got. Um, apparently they have a lot of the old patterns and um, Bernat patterns as well, because Spinrite bought Bernat a few years ago and they've also bought Karen now. Karen Factories, I think down in North Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, maybe. Um, but they get seconds there as well, I believe, at the factory store. There's an e-tent. There's an online site where you can buy this stuff. Um, just look for yarn outlet on the internet. You'll find a... Um, a Try and put a link in the show notes so you, if you want to look at stuff and you obviously can't drive to Ontario or they just had a little tent sale in uh, North Carolina at the Karen factory. Because um, I like a lot of the um, Vicky. Wow. I can see your red hair. Vicky. Wowzers. Howell. Vicky Howell does a line of yarn for them. She's got two or three things. Um, I just bought some of her spinning Jenny purple cotton-ish yarn a few skins just to see what it was like. Um, it's a DK so it's a little too light for what I was thinking I was going to use it for but we'll see. Um, so that's what's going on in my life. Lots of knitting projects and of course work at the lab is super super busy because it's summertime and people want to know if they're well water safe to drink. So, you can find me over on Ravelry as Knitter Sandy. If you have any questions for me, go ahead. Um, this is the angle looks horrible. <laughs> the angle is like really bizarre. It looks better if I do that um, because it's only catching me from here, and I'm like sitting back. I'm not sitting straight. Um, this is the shapely. T by McGowan. I cannot. Wow. I want to say Jillian McGowan, but that's not right. White Lies Designs. If you look up White Lies Designs or look up Shapely T on my projects page, it'll link you the pattern. You can either make a tank or a T. Now, at the time, I didn't do the short rows right, so they look a little funky through here. Um, and I did a little variation on the sleeves um, with just doing a little feather and fan at the edge. I think it helps break it up a little bit. And then there's a shirt tail down at the bottom. It'll go like this. Like men's shirts typically have that rounded edge, not a straight edge. Um, so it kind of hides some of the stuff. And you can do short rows at the shirt tail edge. And this is just a cotton, cotton acrylic blend. I think it's a 50-50 blend that was discontinued a few years ago. I kind of wish they would bring cotton acrylic back because it's worsted weight, but it blended really well. I want to say this is called like sea glass or something like that. That might even be the name of the, the color, but it was like TLC or one of those red heart lines. So that's what I'm working on. You all have a great week and go knit something or go crochet something or go run outside with the dog. Bye-bye. <laughs>